Hello and welcome to this week's Elite Audio video and without doubt our most contentious or possibly the most contentious title of any video we have produced thus far in that hi-fi reviews are indeed a curse. Now any hi-fi reviewer watching this may be currently uh, taking effigies of myself and putting pins in it uh, as retribution for making such a statement. But let me first of all state very clearly and to remove any doubt whatsoever, hi-fi reviews are an essential part of the hi-fi industry and for most people's audio journey. Um, there's some great reviewers out there. We work with many of them. You know, for example, Terry Ellis, Pursuit Perfect Systems. If you've watched any of Terry's reviews, you will know this a man that is very passionate about giving you an honest review. He's a man with integrity, and that is something that is essential when it comes to audio and hi-fi reviews. So, why have I made this very bold statement? Well, let me start by rewinding the clock here. I'm going to take you back to a few years ago when a gentleman came into our showroom who I'll call Ian and Ian it was a retired or is a retired school teacher and he'd spent the best part of about £60,000 on a hi-fi system and to use Ian's words at the time it sounds <laughs> and I'd have to bleep the next part out so that tells you what Ian thought. So we spent some time going through Ian's system, understanding all the components, and it transpired very quickly that what Ian had done is that he had essentially brought together and built a system based purely on reviews. So he bought each of his components or assembled them into his system from very different and separate sources in terms of his purchasing. Now, this is where, I guess, this comes back to the point about hi-fi reviews being a curse because what Ian had done and what he thought he was doing correctly was looking at a review for say an amplifier. That's a great amplifier, it gets top marks and therefore that's what I should buy. Now for manufacturers reviews are essential and these award logos that magazines and online resources apply or award these products for the review are an essential part or become a very essential part of that manufacturing's marketing strategy because when you look into a magazine and you see a nice shiny advert with a nice shiny piece of equipment, most of us do go by the review. You know, is there a review? What does it mean? You know, does that mean it's a good product? Because we assume if it's won a top award, this must be a great product. And to a certain extent, that part is true. But let me come back to Ian again. So Ian had assembled this system without really asking too much advice from a, a one dealer and he brought it together and in Ian's words, it sounded terrible. So I offered to go out to Ian's home and have a listen to Ian's system. And surely enough, Ian's system did in fact meet the billing of being pretty terrible. And I must admit, uh, I at the time was thinking I've heard 3,000 pound systems that in, in, you know, in a l initial listening would outperform this very ex expensive system that Ian had put together. So this kind of uh, highlights one very important aspect and that is whilst a review can give you a flavour of something, it doesn't necessarily mean that firstly that you will like it, secondly that it will actually work with the other components you either already have or are in the process of buying. And let me give you another example. When we had our showroom event earlier this year where we had a blind shootout and there is a video in our uh, database as you'll find if you go into our YouTube videos you will find this video where we had there was about 50 to 60 people in the showroom we had streamers where we played the same audio track into the same amp and same speakers and then 
our audience had to vote firstly what they thought was the best sound. In fact, primarily that was the main goal. They knew what the three streamers were, but they were hidden, they didn't know what order they were playing in and so forth. So what we did was we removed any placebo effect. And placebo, by the way, is a very real thing. There's a lot of research done on it. In fact, you can be cured taking a placebo drug. That's the power of the human mind. However, what we discovered was that there was not any single component in that test, blind test in our showroom, that didn't get someone's vote. Meaning for that individual, regardless of the opinions of anyone else or that of a, or, or that of a reviewer, that for that individual, that was the best product for them, giving the best sound. So that in itself highlights the individuality of us as human beings. You know, we uh, all like different things. We like different food types, different types of beverage. We like some things that are more seasoned, less seasoned, strong flavours, more subtle flavours and so on. And in a sense, when you hear all this descriptive terminology, in essence, that is what you will often read in a hi-fi review. You know, something being a bit more intense, something being a bit more laid back and so forth. So, the other thing to bear in mind as well, that when it comes to reviews, a reviewer's own setup probably doesn't even closely resemble your own listening environment. So therefore, something, particularly loudspeakers, that may sound good in a reviewer's environment may or may not sound good in your environment. And there is, I would say, an almost unhealthy obsession at times about reviews. Now, to go back to where I started, I think reviews are important. I think they give an indication as to whether this product is good or at least worthy of consideration. Part of my personal, I would say, gripe about reviews is that we are, as human beings, want to buy the highest rated product. It's not so much about bragging rights, it's about a bit of bias confirmation that we've made a good choice because a reviewer said so. So if you look at, I'll use what Hi-Fi as an example, and I remember having this conversation with Katan, who is the head uh, reviewer for what Hi-Fi. And he said, oh, but you know, we might give a component three out of five and it's still a good component. Now, that may be true. However, as a buyer, and I, I've had this said to me on a phone conversation or a discussion face to face uh, with a client, is that, oh, well, you know, I, I quite like that product, but it's, it only gets three out of five. So I probably wouldn't be interested. Or another example is, uh, we've got a new product that's just come out, we know it's great, we've listened to it extensively, we've spent time comparing it in uh, essentially what would be more of a real world environment, our small listening room where I'm sat here just now is more akin to someone's home listening environment than say perhaps some more sterile review environments. So you know, we would be able to, I would say, uh, comfortably make a recommendation based on our own comparisons. But we'll then get the caveat, yeah, well, I'm interested, but I'm gonna wait till some reviews come out. And that, again, highlights the weight that you put on a review as far as your own buying uh, preference is concerned. So I'll quickly revert back to Ian from the start of this video. And we eventually, having spent some time, Ian's system actually sounded very thin it sounded very thin and brittle, lacking mid-range. There was certainly not a lot of bass extension, certainly in his room, which is a converted attic space that he'd created for the sole purpose of his, you know, his hobby. And it was a shame because he'd spent all this money, it was his retirement, part of his retirement fund, and he wasn't getting what he expected. So we didn't make too many big changes because that was not our purpose. I wanted to find a way to work with what he had as much as possible and to find the most economic way that we could get Ian in a system or get his system sounding the way he intended. So we did make some changes, but they weren't huge. And by the time we'd finished, Ian had what I would call a synergistic and cohesive sound that he liked. He told me the kind of sound he was looking for. And that's also very important is the more that when you're working with a dealer, 
And the more you can express what you like and dislike, the greater the likelihood of getting something that will match that specific requirement. So I guess you know, part of this video is about saying yes, reviews are important, but they're equally a curse and equal measure, especially if you put too much emphasis on one person's opinion, because ultimately that's what it is. It's an individual's own interpretation of a component in relation to the other components that they already have in that system that may or may not complement that component because you could take that, same, let's talk about a streamer. You could take a streamer and system A sounds amazing and it's system B where, you've, where it connects to a different amplifier but the speakers and everything else could be the same and suddenly it doesn't sound as good as you heard in a previous system, which again highlights the absolute necessity for component matching and finding that synergy. And that's where, so I guess where I'm leading to uh, is the fact that working with one dealer and helping them to help you find the sound you want is a very crucial part of buying audio equipment. It's something I can say that at Elite Audio and me personally, and Barry, who's also um, someone that you may encounter through sale, the sales process, we care about passionately. I mean, I want to listen to, I ask a lot of questions, and sometimes if you phone and speak to me, it may seem like an interrogation. It, it's purely because I care and I'm passionate about ensuring that I understand your system, that I understand what you like about it, what you're hoping to improve, and so on. And, all of these elements are absolutely crucial to the uh, final outcome. I guess also there's another element of chasing trends that people do, you know, the latest piece of hot equipment or hot gear that's just come out, everybody wants to own that. But it's also more about the long-term satisfaction of your system. And that again is where spending time, and certainly us as a dealer, asking all the right questions, will help you come to the right conclusions within obviously the framework of a budget because that's also equally important. And it's also equally important to not have a mismatch in your system in terms of pricing. Again, we can help you navigate the intricacies and at times the complexities of putting together multiple pieces of equipment to bring you an amazing sound. The other thing I guess, and I'm going to come back to uh, a previous lifetime for me where I, uh, my previous uh, career, if you want to call it that, I worked as a professional photographer for many years. Um, and in fact, I then, at one point in that career, I was the head reviewer for Digital Photographer magazine. And it's something I thoroughly enjoy, testing camera equipment. But here's the rub from that. I remember writing a review on a brand whose name I won't mention. They're a, still a current uh, photographic manufacturer brand. They make cameras and lenses. And I had submitted the 2,000 words of my review on this particular camera. And I wouldn't say it was scathing, but it certainly wasn't the kind of review that the manufacturer would have wanted to read, being quite upfront about that. And I remember receiving a phone call from my editor and stating very clearly, would I consider either rewriting it uh, or increasing the percentage score that I'd given it because this manufacturer was a contributor in advertising revenue to the magazine. Now, I'm not naive to think that revenue stream is not important for magazines and or even online review resources. But for my own integrity and I guess that to ensure that what I write has got some value, I refused. I said, no, I said, if you don't want to publish it, that's absolutely fine, but that is the review and I won't change any part of it because it was a uh, real, authentic, and it reflected precisely my experience of using that equipment. Now, I'm not suggesting that that goes on in the audio world, because I don't know. I, I it's, it would be hypothesizing. I personally not come across it uh, in this industry, but equally, that aside, 
as individuals, we have got biases. You know, we have a bias for a particular brand or we have a bias for a particular sound because that suits our preference. And where a reviewer's review could perhaps be misleading for you as an individual, it may not reflect the sound that you like. And that's key because what I might find as detailed and dynamic, somebody else might find as maybe bright or um, unlistenable. I'm sure that's not the case, but I'm using that as an extreme example. Or you know, someone's idea of visceral bass is someone else's idea of bass that is a bit, you know, there's too much overhang or it's a bit ploddy or, it's, or the timing's not quite right. Um, so this is where it comes back to, I guess, another element of what we do at Elite Audio, and that is where we want to make sure that when you get the component, you're happy. But it's the part that happens before that that's really important. And that is the, the, the interrogation of what it is that you want, that season to taste aspect that I love about hi-fi. Because there's so many flavors out there, colors, shades, patterns, the intensity or the relaxation of every single component can provide precisely what you want. And I think we're fortunate that in our portfolio, we've got so many different flavors and tastes and they just colors vividly that our equipment can paint for you and give you that most incredible listening experience because ultimately that is our goal. We are so passionate about achieving that outcome. And that's why I thought that this week, this week's video should be around that whole process of understanding that there is, you know, a, a danger in putting too much emphasis on a review. I think it's important to maybe read a review to get an idea of how something works maybe, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's either right for you or not as the case may be. That trust the advice that your dealer gives you, find someone you like, you like the way they work, that you enjoy the way that they help you and guide you by using your provided information, your preferences, your what you're passionate about to get you to that point where, and I, I love this part, you know, when I get a phone call or an email from a customer and saying, Mark, actually you undersold this or uh, you re the way you described it, it's exceeded that. And that for me is the thing that I enjoy the most and why we put so much emphasis on giving good advice. And, and it comes back to as well, there's no substitute for hands-on you know, hands listening. Um, so, you know, a review should be a starting point. It should not dictate the outcome of your entire, your entire hi-fi journey. And you know what the best system is? It's the one that makes you happy. Not what makes the reviewer happy or your friend happy. Because again, I've also found that a lot of people often buy equipment on a syndicate basis. They are taking the opinions of other people, um, whether it's in a forum, whether they've invited someone around to have a listen. But that person is different to you. They hear things differently. They've got different tastes. Trust what you hear. Put faith, confidence in your own opinion and don't feel that you have to rely heavily on someone else's. Be very open about what you like and dislike. And there's no right or wrong with hi-fi. It's always about finding what is right for you. So whilst hi-fi reviews can indeed be a curse, it's a starting point only. And it's where you then take that information and apply it in a, I would say, a way that is relevant to your own audio system and trusting what a dealer, a knowledgeable, and very experienced professional audio dealer will interject or interact with you to give you the best sound that you possibly can. So it's not all about the high score and reviews. And listen, trust me, I know from a purely business perspective that getting a good review also helps sell equipment. It's a part of this industry that there's a lot of emphasis put upon and you know, for example, let's say, let's take Magazine A, they give uh, Amplifier A an 84% score, which is a great score, but they give Amplifier B an 87% score. Now, those two reviews could have been written a year apart, months apart, by different reviewers, 
in different contexts, in different audio systems, playing different music in different acoustical environments. Does that really mean the one that scored 3% more is a better amplifier? Assuming there's a parity in pricing here, so I'm talking about components that may be on someone's shortlist. And the answer is absolutely not. It does not mean that at all. It simply means both are very good devices and both worthy of consideration. But the most important part of all, and I'm gonna bring this to a conclusion now, is it's only good when you like the sound. And that's where your personal taste is. The key aspect of this journey of hi-fi and finding that elusive audio nirvana we all strive to have. So there we go. Um, Hi-fi reviews are a curse. They're not really. They're simply a means by which we often hang our hat on something we want to buy and we read reviews to confirm we're making the right choice. But more importantly, speak to someone that's knowledgeable, put your trust in them, build a rapport with that person and allow them to guide you because they're the professional, they've got all the experience. And if they listen properly to what you're saying, they will 100% give you the outcome that you're looking for. So there we go. This week's video, thank you very much as always. And if you are enjoying this video or have enjoyed it, if you've enjoyed any of our other videos, please just take a few seconds to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It means a lot to us here at Elite Audio. We're a small business, as you know. We've got a team of very passionate individuals that care greatly about your opinion. So if you're liking what we're doing, please, it would mean a great deal, just take a few seconds to like and subscribe. Um, we've got some great things coming in the coming weeks. We've got the brand new Hi-Fi Rose um, DAC, the RD160, which is, I was hoping I was gonna have it for this video, and if we'd had it here, this video would have been very different. It would have been a, a, an unboxing video. Um, we've also got the review of the, uh, review. <laughs> There's me saying, we've got a review coming, you need to watch it because it's important. Um, having just, yeah, you know, as I said, reviews are important. We, we've got a, the, the Luxman DA-07X uh, review, that's to come too, um, and lots more. We've got the Scottish Hi-Fi show next month. Again, I will bring all the details up on screen. Please get your tickets booked, we will be there. Uh, with a huge display of audio equipment, we're going to have three very distinct systems set up there. I'll be there personally all weekend. Uh, please come along, introduce yourself. I'd love to meet you. I want to hear about your audio system and your own journey, where you started, where you've ended up. It's a fascinating journey most people undertake and I'm never tired of hearing each individual's uh, route to where they are today. So uh, get your tickets booked and we'd love to see you there in November. And as always, please have a great week listening to music. It is the best way to unwind, feel connected, and just enjoying the fabulous way that we as human beings experience life through the medium of music and audio equipment. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.